Are you coming? Do your intro thing. I, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, we had the same idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to another edition of a Tom Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. Uh, my name is Steven. Have a nice weekend, guys. <laughs> We're here to talk about Tenant, guys. Tenant, the newest Christopher Nolan movie. Uh, which we've been long waited. We've been teased this movie since uh, the Rise of Skywalker preview, uh, which uh, which I remember being in the theater and they played like the first five minutes of that movie, and everyone was like, "Fuck Rise of Skywalker, let's keep watching this movie." And uh, and so um, finally, it was supposed to come out in July, but because of our uh, amazing, horrible friend COVID, invisible friend COVID, we haven't been able to um, watch. Uh, the movie until just now it came out Labor Day weekend we saw it uh, and uh, we were in the th- we, we braved the theater and the fir- first the theater experience was good right uh, make sure we visit us at three locations uh, we have a location at Pembroke Pines Coral Gables and Miami in front of FIU uh, and it was uh, I mean <laughs> I I'm not gonna do the whole thing backwards <laughs> I'm like writing down notes because I, I was gonna I, try to like I, catch up. I, but I'm, I'm I, I know I, I was I was gonna play along, but I'm like that. that this is gonna be hard. I, that's that's too hard. We'd have to script the whole thing to yeah. make sense. I, I, you were you were doing well. I was I was going with it. Yeah, man, but you you you, you failed. I did too. Yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Because I'd rather have a conversation with you than just dick around <laughs> for thirty minutes. Just go backwards. Yeah, and take notes and yeah. shit. Like, yeah. Chris, listen, Christopher Nolan's a smart man. Why? That shit's hard. To go backwards and did. forwards at the same time? Um. So, okay, wait, going, going wait, back wait, to your point, the yeah. theater experience was fantastic. Yeah, not a lot of people. There was nobody. Nobody? Nobody. Um, and uh, it, it uh, I don't know, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was it was nice to have a feeling of normalcy. It was, it was. You know, you kept your mask on the whole time. Sure. Uh, I did not. I was eating popcorn and uh, an Icy, which I later regretted because... That oil and that popcorn does not sit well with me anymore. Getting 40, old. 40. It's horrible. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we went to AMC, IMAX. You, you have to see this movie in IMAX. Yeah, 100%. Um, and uh, how did the movie even do? What was the box office take? Do we even know. know? Let's look it up. I mean, listen, I, with it not being busy, every, this was a highly anticipated movie. This movie was supposed to kickstart. What's the name of the thing they ten, used? Ten, box uh, office. Box office mojo. There you go. You're over there. Um, the... It, you know, it was supposed to like re-energize, restart the the um, the what the what you would call it the the movie theater experience. Of course, New Mutants came out the week before, and Bill and Ted faced the music, which uh, we haven't seen those yet, but uh, it's on our to-do list. Uh, but uh, the first movie we saw was Ten, and a week later, and uh, so what's what's the same? What do you got? Oh no, I was looking at what movies are coming out. Come I got on, distra- dude. I got distracted. Dude. Jesus, god damn, Tenant did. So far, twenty what? million. That's it. Twenty million, <laughs> and one hundred and thirty-two international. I'm surprised about that international number, honestly. So it's done one hundred fifty million in the box office in one weekend. That's act- listen. No, hold on though. Twenty million domestically for Labor Day weekend is horrible, awful, awful, absolutely. But in the age of COVID, to pull in one hundred and fifty million worldwide, I mean, I think the studio was smart to not. Put it on streaming services right away, and to put it in the theater. No, not if they made 150 million. Yeah, you know, and guess what? People are still going to watch it. It's probably not going to hit your streaming service until next month. Oh, you know, uh, New Mutants. Oh my God, 21 million worldwide. Oh, just putting as perspective. Perspective. Uh, we'll talk about New Mutants another time. But one 150 from 10 <laughs> to 21. <laughs> Bill and Ted Face the Music 2.5 million. Oh God. But that's already on a streaming, believe it or not. Yeah. Um. Goddamn, Camila Cabello's on right now. There's something about her. She's like dirty, but I like her. You know. No, 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 no. Anyways, I um, so I, so, listen seriously. On on a, on a serious note, not bad. So anyway, enough about the movie theater. Enough about all the stuff like that. Tenant pulled in 150 million worldwide, 20 million domestically. Uh, what'd you think of the movie, Juan? You loved it. 
I did love it. You Pink couldn't Pink. shut up about it. Yeah, I could. Yeah, we went with my brother. My brother, him, and me, and uh, or I, or whatever. And and uh, it was, um, you know, both my brother and him, like, they both think Blade Runner is, like, a masterpiece. So it's mm -hmm. no secret that they both were, like, uh, jerking each other off for, mm -hmm. for this movie. Um, I enjoyed the movie as well. Um, there were elements about it that I just was, like, a little dragged down, a little unnecessary. But overall, really great. I thought the lead character, uh, what's his name? You don't know. But he uh, he's a star for Black Klansman too, Black right? Black Klansman, which was yeah. excellent. And and you want to listen? This guy did a fabulous job. Like like holy crap! Like uh, MCU or DCEU hit this guy up. This guy phenomenal but actor. But you know what's weird is uh, his character in Tenet, he kind of acted exactly how he did. The Black Klansman character was like kind of the same. So what you're saying, like he only has one like trick up his well, sleeve? Well, no, I mean he did awesome. I'm just saying he did awesome twice in a row the same way. And let me tell you what, that guy's strong as hell too. The the pull ups he was doing, I can't do that. I'm not even gonna lie. I've never been able to do a pull up in my life. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but uh, I don't. I, listen, guy did a phenomenal job. And let me tell you something. John David Washington. John David Washington. Shout out to John David Washington. That guy did a solid. Oh, right he was there. in the Book of Eli. I don't uh, remember yeah. him in that. Huh? R really good. Really good. Really good. John David Wash Washington. Great job starring in Tenet. Let's talk about the other person, the co-star, um, Robert Pattinson, and Batman. I trust, man. That guy did a great job. I am so looking forward to oh, him, no. oh. him being Batman. I'm like, how great was Robert Pattinson? He was really good. I didn't recognize him. You didn't recognize Robert Pattinson? I didn't pay attention enough to know that was him. Stop. You knew he was in the movie, didn't no, you? No, I, no, I did not. Yes, he was in the movie. And then Kenneth Branagh, who's been in the movie industry for decades now, uh, directed Thor, amongst many other movies, too. Um, he, was the, he was the big bad. He was the bad guy. Hello? Yes. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah. Now, there was also another uh, uh, side star in the movie. She was a female component of the movie. Uh, and and uh, and she had a child and it, and she was the she was the wife of of the Hello, how are you doing? She was the, she was the wife of the of of the bad guy in a strange marriage and all stuff like that. L little domestic abuse, all the, all that stuff. But her story was a huge component of the movie and I think the weakest part. So, so, she was like really unnecessary and uh, they used her as the, as basically the device that moved the story forward when she didn't need to be because the investigation or backwards. Is, the, yeah, the investigation <laughs> yeah. in itself was that so I think she was unnecessary, weak and it made for a weaker character because of all of a sudden he's not trying to save the world, he's trying to save her. Yeah, the lead and character. It's just, I, I, and I think it takes away from the lead character. I agree, I agree. And and, and he was he was he was willing to sacrifice the world basically to assure that that she and her well, she son just met too, was right? was okay. You know it, what I mean? It isn't like a childhood friend that he that, like it's just met this person yeah it just it, it, it the, the consequences it, it, didn't, that, it didn't make sense to me for the type of character that he was i agree i agree 150 percent. so I, that yeah. to me was the the only weakness to me in the movie but it was huge yeah it was huge it's what makes it not one of my favorite movies ever was it, it just bothers me so much it was a huge part of the movie it, it kind of like you know what it is like that whole the whole steve trevor thing in wonder woman like I, they just randomly throw in a love story for what would have otherwise been like just a consistent, good story, or like Ray and Kylo. Yeah, it, all that stuff's unnecessary. Yeah, because the action was going to happen anyways. Yeah, yeah. But they like kind of put in a love story that kind of weakens the characters. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But it wasn't even a love story. Like they weren't. It was just like like I'm your guardian angel. I'm going to make sure you yeah, and your son are yeah, okay, was... no matter what. The world can end. I don't care as long as you and your son are okay. Which yeah, makes so. no sense, by the way, guys. Um, We're never given a name for the lead character. The lead character. Yeah. He's, He's just known as a protagonist. protagonist yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, listen, it's it. It Robert Pattinson spoiled this months ago. Said it's not a time travel movie. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. So it's not a time travel movie. No. But it is. It's not. Listen, the the girl, the wife, travels back to another part of time. No, inverse. Yes, I mean, so I mean, look, can you explain this? Maybe you can do it better than me. The whole forward, backwards well, so, stuff. So the whole plot of the movie is... Spoilers, <clears throat> kids. Spoilers. Number one, we don't know who the protagonist works for. Uh, by the end of the movie, I think you're told he's basically working for himself. Yeah. He's not really part of any group. 
everyone that ends up interacting with him. Are we spoiling? Yeah, absolutely. Every single person yeah. that interacts with him were all recruited. Every single soldier, every single person was recruited by him. Um, you have to kind of accept that this can exist in a paradox, right? Because in the past he knew in, enough to to go forward and then go back into the past and educate himself. So it's kind of like circular. I don't know if that's what Robert Pattinson was talking about at the end of the movie, where he's basically stuck in a loop doing the same mission, saving the world every single time. He's stuck in a loop. Yeah, well, I have to rewatch it again because yeah. I had my questions about that, but from what I understood is Pattinson's character, his sacrifice is to be constantly reliving, doing the same thing, stuck in a loop because it always has to work out the same. Does that make him immortal? They didn't answer that, but I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Probably not. No, because then his character catches up to him. Maybe he... It's weird. Yeah. Um. So what happened is that there's this technology. They find out that there's these bullets that, that travel, uh, that there's inverse time, right? So instead of moving forward, it moves backwards. But not in the sense of time travel, because this this inverse reality can exist in this in in in, uh, in the where, as we go forward, it can also be backwards at the same time. Yes. Right. Uh, time travel. You're inserting yourself into the timeline. In this, the timelines are like coexisting. Just some. Something is going in the reverse. You see it. You have to consider it almost like you're, you're you you. We in the theater, you got to understand that because we're watching this from the outside in, we can see both. Where the characters, it wouldn't be the same. So you have to have that frame of mind that it. That but they could see both. Remember, like like no no they even, could even, even even at the end of the movie when you had the red team and the blue team, they saw each other moving. Right, they at could, the same but time. but within your timeline as you're going forward, even if something is going backwards, you're still moving forward. So. From that perspective, it wouldn't matter. Only because we we're, we're outside of it, could we really grasp what is happening? Yeah. Right. So. Um, look, it's su super confusing. Definitely worth a second. But it's time to watch. It's, it's, yeah. it's 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 a lot harder to explain yeah. than it is to watch. If you're watching, it's easy to understand. It's hard to explain because the concept, it's it's difficult to put into words. I mean, um. So so they discover these bullets. So like for example, uh, you shoot a bullet. Well, the bullet basically comes back into the gun. For example. Which right. just that motion alone seems like right. almost impossible. Like, like you, how do you pick it up and then like it comes back at you? Right. And it's a different feeling. They said it's a, it's a whole bunk cluster. Fire doesn't yeah. burn. Fire is cold. So yeah. just it's inverse. Yeah. Everything is. And, and like if if you're going backwards, why people are going for you have to wear like uh, uh, air. You right. have your own air because your your lungs are inverted. Basically, they said, yeah. and if you can't breathe the air the same, the gravity feels different to you. Just everything is a mess. And, mm -hmm. and and explain this to me. How how was the whole thing with, like the the the, the whole thing with the villain and everything controlling? Uh, that, so the villain. Like, so the villain basically. How how was the war going to end? That's the part I really didn't get. And maybe I wasn't paying attention well enough. But like, what what would create like the whole like, you know? Um, so so in the future. Do you they, remember that? Yes, because the, so the people from the future. Explain this. I'm going to get this thing. Go the on. people from the future sent back are, are were basically sending this technology into the past to the main villain, right? Uh, the the promises were that they, he would be rich. Oh, look at that! I have to get the phone. Steve. So so they were sending this to the villain, and, and so the whole part the villain ended up being rich, and and he became rich because of this. He had all this extra tech technology. Um, I can't pay attention. I can't explain this with all this stuff going on. Anyways, so the the, the thing is that the scientists that created the, the this algorithm for what is inverse uh, split it up into different pieces, right? And what uh, they're doing is sending back the algorithm to the guy. He puts it to, to put it together in the past, which would cause the end of the world for the future. That the people in the future that are, are doing this um, do not believe that they will be affected by the end of the world. Uh, Eric Bana, he believe he's doing it because he has cancer and is dying anyways. So uh, they Eric show Banna. not Eric Bana, Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. Um, he's doing it. He has cancer basically, and he's uh, obviously this conceited, self-obsessed human being. And and the whole point of his movie is if he can't have it, no one will. So since he's dying. Of cancer, he's going to take everyone with him, anyways, and that's why he agrees to do this uh, to put together this this uh, algorithm that will end the world. I don't know, Steve. It sounded, you know, what it sounded like. It sounded like uh, like the ultimate, like uh, Secret Wars. Why? Because you had the regular world was going to collide with the ultimate world, and they were going to wipe each other out. 
So the conversion. Yes. So the algorithm allowed the conversion to happen, wiping out the world. Do we think Chris Nolan ripped off Jonathan Hickman? I don't think Chris Nolan ripped off Jonathan Hickman. <laughs> Chris Nolan's a smart guy. Um, I, I think the, the most impressive thing about the movie was the way that it was filmed. Uh, I mean, Steve could attest to that. I think they did a lot of cool things. you got to watch it multiple times because before I realized it, um, which you realize it pretty soon, but not soon enough to notice all the little things going around, um, is that because a lot of the movie, so the movie happens, the, it goes forward and backwards at the same time. So once the inverse start happening, it starts leading towards the beginning of the movie, right? Um, so it flips, like the middle of the movie is actually the end of the movie, and then you start going back towards the beginning of the movie again. All right, so the reason you have to watch this multiple times is so you can catch all the little, uh, all the little moments in the movie where you see them, where you see someone in the background or something in the background happening. You don't realize that that later on in the inverse is traveling towards. Dude, this is super confusing to fucking explain. No, you're doing great. You're doing great. This is awful. I no, can't explain. I'm, I'm done. You're doing great. And so the climax, I believe, of the movie is not even the end of the movie where the movie is resolved. But to me, the climax of the movie was the direct, the direct middle of the movie. There is a fight scene early on in the movie where the protagonist is fighting a man in a suit. Have a good one. The protagonist is fighting a man in a suit. Uh, he can't see who it is. And the protagonist is obviously fighting forward and the other guy is fighting inverse. All right, I'm going to spoil something for you. Spoil. He's, he's fighting himself. Right, he's fighting inverse him. Who's fighting? And and what happens is that happens towards the beginning. Uh, not towards the beginning, but like let's say um, a fourth of the way through the movie. And then towards the back end, the inverse. You see it from the other perspective. That is what kind of just opens everything up to you and lets you understand what's really happening. I think that's the coolest thing that happened in the movie. To me, that was the climax of the movie. Was when you see that fight in reverse. It was it was just mind blowing to me. Um, I, I think Nolan did an awesome job as a director. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was really hard to film, to write, to choreograph. So, like, kudos to him, Steve. I'm done. This guy, he wants me to... I'm, I'm horrible at this. I don't like to talk. In fact, I do this because it makes Steve happy. He's my friend. I like to do stuff for my friends. I don't like to talk. I don't want to fucking be here right now. This is fucking terrible. Yeah, Gus, go so he can sit down with... I, I never treated a customer that way, but fucking leave because I can't talk. You're good. So to me, the climax of the movie <laughs> was that fight scene. Wait, 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 wait! But 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 listen, the first time we saw the fight scene, I kind of I kind of had a feeling it. Was I knew it was him because yeah. because Robert Patterson was like, "Don't kill him." Yeah, I remember he pulled the mask off. We didn't see who that person. And then he was. lets him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing I didn't get was, didn't he get sucked out of the thing and into the jet engine, and the jet engine blew no, up? No, he didn't get sucked into the jet engine. Are we sure? I'm a I'm 100%. Because that's what I thought originally happened. No, 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 no. He just got sucked out. Yeah. Well, either way. I don't, I don't know. Uh, listen. And like Wonski said, like, like the movie finds a way to have the end and the beginning kind of meet it somewhere in the middle. And then, but then... It, it does a curve. So this is the movie. It goes towards forward, towards half the movie. Yeah. Then it turns around and goes back to the beginning. Kind of though, because no, a hundred percent. That's what it did. Because the beginning no, because is him on the, the boat. No, because the third act, they're like somewhere in the desert, fighting a ton of like right, military right. people. Right, but that happens in the beginning of the movie. We just never see it happen. Does it? In time, yes, because he's on the boat. Remember when we? She has the flashback mm -hmm. to them in by the group by the island where they're on the boat, where yeah. she's telling him about that, that that was the moment she realized he was like a yeah, psychopath. Uh -huh, yeah. That is the beginning of the movement. While she's telling that, she doesn't understand, none of them do, that this operation was happening anyways. Yes, I know. Right. What a cluster. So that is the beginning and the end of the movie. Not a cluster. Listen, I, I will say this. It, it, Look, you have to think. You have to pay attention. This is a movie that needed subtitles, in my opinion, by the fucking way. Listen, I was just going to say that, too. Like, I speak English, and... The accents were heavy, and, and it could you be know, like, not, not only that because the IMAX amplifies the sounds, right? Yes. To me, sometimes and they're and they're in those masks too, right? Time sometimes too, to so. me it sounded muddled, yeah. and I was like, I don't know if I'm old and I can't hear anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 and, no. And it also could be that I watch everything at my house with subtitles. Do you really? I hate. I, I, I love I, it. I find myself reading. More than I, I do I actually do, watching I, No, the movie. I do read a lot, but the thing is, it's it it's kind of enhanced my experience, in my opinion. I don't miss as much. And so I'm used to subtitles. And, the, and then the subtitles also put up a bunch of shit I don't care. Like, what's on the radio? 
You know, or the background people talking. I don't want to care. I don't care. Well, you know, yeah. that's a mood. But I, I don't. Either way, Steve. Yeah. I I wish this movie had subtitles, just because I found like half the dialogue I didn't understand. I didn't hear correctly. It just sounded jumbled. Like, is that my mask? No. Oh. No, that's not mine. I don't know. This is my mask. Where's mine? I don't know. What's my mask? What you doing, my mask? Hello, everyone. What? The same, the same mine. Are you sure? No, because it, it is mine. Yeah, Why'd you take? Why are you playing with the mask? I'm playing with the mask. Hi, how are you guys doing? Oh, yeah, you're good. Don't play with my mask. That's gross, dude. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, what the hell? Play with my mask? So, uh... <laughs> Speaking of, this is what it sounded like. So, yeah, I wish I wish yeah. it did have subtitles. Um, So, the movie, look, the movie is uh, uh, complicated. Very. It's, it's, it's a lot more than a lot of other movies, but... Yeah. It's one hunt to the average human being... It is 100% understandable. So don't let people tell you, oh, no, it's, it's, it's really not. It's, I'll tell you what, it's not like Inception at all. Uh, Inception leaves you, you, you don't, there's no answer to Inception. The questions aren't answered. I think for this one it is. Listen, Everything is I enjoyed the movie. I, I, listen, I hated the, the, the thing with the, with the wife with the wife and the kid. I hated that. Yeah. And to be honest, the whole like third act with, with, with the military aspect of it, like this huge army all of a sudden showed up out of nowhere that they're fighting for God knows no, why. No, because he prepared them for that moment. I, I know. In but, the but, future. But, but, but what the, I, you know what? We're, we're just to assume that the right. other army works for Kenneth Branagh. Like, no, and, yeah, Kenneth Branagh, that's the place that blew up in Russia. Is where it? He beca- yes, where he became. Are you sure? Yes, that's where he became rich, and the people in the future were sending the algorithm to that place because no one else would go there because of the radiation. Okay, here's what I don't understand. How come spoilers, kids? How come? How come when when he goes down into the hole and he sees the dead guy with the backpack on that has the little charm, which we find out later is Robert Pattinson? How did he get there when the whole thing gets blown up and how did he die? And then but how that, is he alive that's again? What's, that's what's cool about the whole third scene, right? That it was all about Robert Pattinson. Yeah, but we don't. But we don't know. Like, how did you get there and how do you get dead? Because there were multiple Robert Pattisons. At the same time? Right, because the one that was doing that already existed. Mm. And then this was an inverse one. It's how you end up living forever. As you get old, the, the, the new one replaces you. Okay. Remember, because he existed in two places at the same time. It's like Gemini, man. No, in fact, no. Um, you could say at one point the protagonist existed in three places at the same time. You guys all set? Go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk. Oh my god! No, I'm not. Do- I'm not talk. talking about this just, fucking movie just, just, by myself, just, just, man. Talk, talk to them. I don't like to talk. You're making no. me talk about the most complicated movie I've seen. Talk. God nice damn it! Is it... We have a... Tenet was really good. Did you see Tenet, Paul? I have not. You should go. Do you like Christopher Nolan? That was great. It's not better than Memento, but it's it's close. Yeah, we saw it at the IMAX. Oh, over in Broward? Yeah, yeah, over in Broward in uh, the Pembroke Pines Mall. Oh, dude, 100%. You, gotta see on big you have to see it in IMAX. Yeah. But it was good, man. It's not as complicated as people made it out no. to be. No. Oh, it looks interesting. And, and just the, like the plot, the, the way they, they, what the, you know, the gimmick was right. actually a really cool gimmick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. I look forward to more, as usual, uh, Christopher Nolan movies. Steve, we should rate. Well, you know what? Look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I love Nolan, but uh, I've never seen Interstellar. So let me look up Christopher Nolan movies. And Why you got to talk? You can't, you can't I'm, decide, I'm, decide. I'm looking stuff up. What are you looking up? That's I'm going to rate Christopher Nolan movies. Oh, my God. Okay, out of the ones I've seen, guys, because yeah. to be honest, I've never seen Interstellar. I know, that's terrible. So, the best Christopher Nolan movie... Or should we... I go from the bottom up? No, I'm going to go down. The number one Christopher Nolan movie is still Memento. I believe that this movie we just saw is number two. Yep. Uh, the Prestige is his third best movie. The Prestige. So, Memento... Tenet, The Prestige, Dark Knight Rises, no, let's do Batman Begins, Dunkirk, Dark Knight Rises, Insomnia, and at the very end, uh, Inception, because I hate Inception. Huh? Inception was the, Inception, you know what Inception was? 
Do you ever remember what's the name of that movie from the eighties? The Dream Warrior was it? Where the guy had to save the the president was gonna have send a nuclear attack and the guy could go in dreams and he had to fight this weird monster thing to save the nuclear code. Uh, Inception, I, I, for a second I got Dreamscape. Dreamscape, yeah. Inception's Dreamscape. I got confused with Inception and Memento. No, yeah, well, Memento's. Yeah, Memento's awesome. Memento's Actually, awesome. Did you see this first one, uh, following? I haven't seen the following. The, the, no, it's not the following. It's following. The following, yeah, yeah. I know. Like, it's it's pretty good. It's like clearly you can tell it's his first work because it's right. like low budget and like almost like handheld camera. Mm. But the story's good. It's you can see it's. His, his Batman movie, so, okay, so his Batman movie is obviously the Dark Knight's the best, so let me think. Look, 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 top three. It's, it's so easy. Memento, no, top three. Tenet, D Dark Knight Rises. No, 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 no. Dark Knight Rises over Dark Knight? No, Dark Knight, I'm sorry. Dark Jesus Knight, the Joker Christ, one. Dude. I don't yeah. fucking remember. No, no, look, look, look. Four ready, years ready, old. Ready, here we go. Top three. Top three, ready? Top three goes like this. Number three, um, Inception. Two, Dark Knight. One, Inception. Wrong. Yeah, that's my Inception top three. is that's the my bottom. Top three. Inception's at the bottom. No, Inception's number three. Dark, no, in Dark Knight number two. Interstellar number one. You know one. what is? I don't like people that don't give me an answer. Like they write a story and be like, the ending's up to you. Be like, no, motherfucker, you, you just couldn't. You just anybody can write anything if they don't have to explain it. Let's talk about Hans Zimmer's awesome soundtrack. Awesome, it was great. It was like the sound was yeah. Yeah. Almost, almost as good as Blade Runner, not quite. <laughs> Listen, you gotta admit that that Blade Runner twenty forty nine sound was the, the, unbelievable. The, the sound design in Blade Runner was amazing. The visuals were amazing. Just everything else sucked. Wrong. Listen, anyways, guys, go see Tenet. Go to the movies. It's totally safe. If one can go, anyone can go. Right? Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Just uh, anyways, go go see Tenet. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, you come, you come see us at any of our three locations. We are open daily at 11, Pepper Pines, Gables, and, uh, and Miami. Uh, that's it, right? And that's all. For Top Pop Feature Family, boy, I'm Steven. Hi, welcome to the show. We're Atomic Pop. This is Juan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's it. So, that's it. Pincer. <laughs>